Welcome to the Northeastern Region Data Center in Boston. I'm Dick McKinnon, Manager of Installation Support. Today we're going to see a demo of VM370, the Virtual Machine Facility, CMS Conversational Monitor System, and the 3270 as a programming terminal. We'll hear how one customer is benefited from VM CMS. VM370 offers an interactive computing capability for the DOS VS and OS VS user in three areas, program development, problem solving, and interactive applications. It provides conversational capabilities for the COBOL, PL1, Fortran, Assembler, and APL user. It can also be used as a testing and conversion tool, such as DOS to OS conversion, MVT to VS2, and ASP testing. VMCMS is designed to run on System 370 models 135 through 168. Today, we're going to see VM370 running with CMS users in DOS VS on our System 370 model 135 here in the data center. VM is a normal part of our operating environment, and we also use it with OS VS1, IMS VS, and GIS VS. Our 135 has 512K, 3330 disk drives on two channels, and the Virtual Machine Assist microcode feature. VM370 complements DOS VS on the 135 and offers ability to implement interactive computing. VM CMS has facilities to make program development easier to do and has features to greatly enhance the productivity of all personnel associated with their installation. We will see today how DOS VS Batch can run under VM with concurrent program development using either of two techniques for COBOL programming. Technology has brought the cost of hardware down, but the demand for skilled data processing personnel in many locations has exceeded the supply, and the cost of people has continued to climb. In addition, We've realized that more and more applications can be profitably computerized, and most of us find ourselves with a backlog of applications that we'd like to implement. The problem which most of us are trying to solve is to increase the productivity of both our end users and data processing personnel. VM370 offers an excellent answer to that problem. Studies have shown that the productivity of a maintenance programmer can be increased 80% through the use of VM370, while the productivity of the application programmer working on new program development can be increased 50%. Today, we'd like to let you see for yourself how VM370 addresses the productivity problem for program development and maintenance. Let's watch now while Sherry Scott IPLs VM370 on R135. IPLing VM370 is extremely easy, which makes it feasible to bring up VM in a DOS VS shop for only a portion of the production day. Watch now as Sherry presses the IPL button. She then responds with an end of block to keep the date and time as they now exist. A second end of block indicates that a warm start will be allowed. Typing enable all activates the lines to the terminals. She now types in a start to activate the unit record equipment and the VM370 IPL is complete. We'll now move to our first virtual machine which we'll access through a 3270 display terminal and see how Sherry starts up our DOS VS batch production work under VM. I'm about to start our DOS VS production work in one virtual machine. This 3270 terminal is my interface to my virtual machine for DOS VS. First, I log on to DOS VS and then enter my password. You can see that the password does not appear on the screen. This is due to VM support of the write inhibit feature of the 3270 hardware and provides system security. To IPL DOS VS, I type the word IPL and 350.
This is the drive on which my SysRes resides. And I can do this rather than pushing a button as I would on the real console. I now hit the interrupt keys just as I would on a real 3215 console. I type in SAT and DPD IPL commands, and that my DOS VS IPL is now complete. When I respond to the Ready for Communications message, DOS VS begins to execute the first job, job Fortran, which has been read in through the real card reader and directed to my virtual machine. This job will compile a Fortran program and when it is finished compiling, it will be printed on the high-speed printer. The DOS VS batch machine will continue to process production work, just as it would when running by itself on the 135. This work will probably be entered from the card reader, although it also could come in from a tape or disk. Let us now move to another terminal where Love Seawright will demonstrate for us how VMCMS can be useful for COBOL program development. I'm going to show you COBOL running under CMS, the conversational monitor system, which is the interactive portion of VM370. I'm going to take you through part of a test session working with the new COBOL program. First, I log on to Cob Demo and enter my password. Again, you will notice that it does not print. CMS is automatically IPL into my virtual machine. Let us now look at the COBOL program, which we're going to be testing today. I already have this in a file named COBSAMP COBOL. This program was created by reading in a deck of cards through the card reader. I could have created it by entering it directly from the terminal or reading it from a reel of tape. Let us look briefly at this program. Edit COBSAMP COBOL. I've just invoked the CMS editor, which allow us to browse through the program one page of 20 lines at a time. You'll notice that the program begins with the identification division, the first card of the COBOL program. As we scroll through the program, you'll see that it looks like a normal COBOL job. There are no control cards of any kind. Now it'll let us compile the program. We're going to type quit to take us out of the editor and back to CMS. By entering the command COBOL, COBSAMP, I have just invoked the ANS COBOL version 4 compiler underneath CMS, which will compile this program and print any error messages on our display screen. The string of asterisks that you see appearing now indicate to us that work is being done even though no messages are being sent to that terminal at that moment. Now the compile has completed and we see that we have four error messages out on the screen. The first error is SYSNC. It's really a misspelling of the COBOL abbreviation SYNC for synchronized. We have two places where the field number is not defined, and we have name field is spelled wrong, being not defined in the program. Let us now correct our COBOL source program by invoking the editor. Edit, COBSAMP, COBOL. The CMS editor is extremely powerful and works on the basis of either a line number or context. We will now see some of the ways in which context editing can be performed. The first error involved the word sync, S-Y-S-N-C. So let's locate that in our program by typing in locate S-Y-S-N-C. You will notice that the editor positions the line containing this in the middle of our screen. There we see a few lines preceding that line and a few lines after to give us a window into our program. I'm going to change the word S-Y-S-N-C I'm going to take this line and bring it down into the input area at the bottom of the screen by typing in change. I'm going to move the cursor underneath the second S in the word SYSNC. I'm going to hit the delete key to delete the S, then the enter key to enter that line back into that position in my program. I see that I have the word number on the screen, so number must be a misspelling of the word number. So I'm going to change that by typing in C, number, 
number. The two asterisks meaning change it everywhere in the program. You'll notice it has told me that two lines have been changed. The third error, his name field is spelled wrong. So I'm going to issue a locate abbreviated with an L on the character string wrong. Just enough unique characters to get me to the error. I see the name field is spelled wrong. I'm going to type in C for change and bring that down into the input area and work on it with the cursor keys of the 3270. I'm going to move the cursor over to the L, hit the insert mode key, and insert the I and the E prior to the L. By resetting and getting out of insert mode, I'm going to move the cursor over to the next dash. By hitting the delete key, I'm going to delete all of the characters over to, but not including the period. All of that is done in the buffer of the 3270. By hitting enter, it now goes back in to my program. We will now type file to rewrite our corrected COBOL source program on our disk. We will now recompile the program, having hopefully corrected the syntax errors and attempt our first text execution. We do this by typing run COBOL, COBSAM. Run COBOL is an exec, something like a catalog procedure, which will cause the program to be compiled be loaded for testing and to begin execution. This COBOL program will create a sequential file, read it back in again, and display the data records on the console. We see that the compilation is still occurring. The compiler has issued a warning message, but execution is now beginning and data records are appearing on our terminal. It's continuing to execute. It looks like we have a logic error with a decimal data exception. Since it is not very useful to know the hexadecimal address of the admin, we're now going to invoke the COBOL interactive debug by issuing the command test code COBSAM. We are now going to be communicating and interacting with test code. You see the prompt message coming out. We enter next and go to get past COBOL initialization and to stop at the first executable statement. Note that it tells us that it is stopped at source statement 62, first verb. And it is step, stopped because of the next. Let's look at source statements 60 through 70 to see the first verb. We see that in source statement 62, the first verb is open. We can now set some breakpoints to monitor certain conditions in our program, as we are not sure where the program has abended. At source statement 66, we see that we're adding one to count. So let's put a breakpoint at source statement 66 and get it to give us the status of file 1 when it gets there to 66. We also see in our program that we are using count as a counter in several places. So let's find out when and where the field CNT count obtains a value greater than 10. So let's enter when, a label of 1, and tell it to stop when count gets greater than 10. We notice by listing count at this point that count currently has a value of plus zero. We now go to begin executing interactively under the control of COBOL Interactive Debug. Execution stops at source statement 66 first verb, and the characteristics of file one are shown. Let's turn off that breakpoint with off 66 and continue executing. My program is writing data records to the terminal. And we stop again at source statement 66, second verb. And it's stopped because of the when condition. So count must be greater than 10. Let's list count and find its current content. We see that count has a value of plus 11, is indeed greater than 10. Let's look at the source code where count became greater than 10 by saying source 66. We can see that we're adding one to count. And when we got down to the move statement, count was greater than 10. 
Let's turn off the monitoring of count with off when and resume execution of the program that has abended on us previously. We continue executing. Program is writing to the terminal, and our program has abended. However, this time, COBOL Interactive Debug tells us the program has ended in module COBSAMP 79th statement, first verb. So let's take a look at source statement 79. And we see that it is a compute statement. We evidently program checked trying to execute the compute. I wonder if the contents of B has valid data. So let's list B. We can see by the asterisk that B has some unprintable data because it is defined as a packed signed field. We can temporarily change the value of B and continue execution by setting B equal to 1. We can see that the change has occurred by listing B, and it is indeed a plus 1. It's valid data. By saying go, the program resumes execution at the point of ab in. We will look for additional errors during this test session. At this point, our program has ended normally. However, we might have encountered several more data exceptions or other logic errors during this single debugging session. I think you can see how using the conversational monitor system for COBOL program development improves my productivity. In one session, I can get my program to compile cleanly, using the powerful facilities of the context editor to correct the source errors. I do not have to use complicated JCL, and so I don't lose test time because of job control errors or due to batch turnaround delay, such as the program never being put into the card reader by the operators. Probably the most important thing to me in working on debugging my program is the continuity of thought that I am able to maintain by working continuously on one program at my terminal. I get more test shots, and I can find more errors in each debugging session. I can also debug the program more thoroughly and more exactly. CMS definitely improves my productivity in a program development situation. Let us look at another way of using CMS for program development. Let's watch Sherry Scott now work in what is known as alternating operating systems. I am logging on to my terminal. And CMS is automatically IPL'd for me. I am going to alternate operating systems, alternately using CMS and DOSVS in my virtual machine for COBOL program development, similar to what Love Seawright has just shown you under CMS. Some reasons I might want to do this include wanting to use features specific to the DOSVS COBOL compiler or to go into test execution of an ISAM program. I am going to be making extensive use of the program function keys during this session. Let us see how they are set at the moment by querying PF for program function. You can see that almost all of the 12 keys are set to some command, which I use frequently when alternating between DOSVS and CMS. These function keys are defined by each user. For example, to set function key 4 to the list file command, I use the set command by pressing set pf4 list file of my disk. By pressing pf key 4, I list the files on my disk. We can see that I have a sample program out there called COBE Test 1 COBOL. It is very similar to COBSAMP COBOL, which Love just showed you. And in fact, it contains the same source errors. We can browse through this, looking at both the beginning and the end of the program. We notice, however, that in addition to our COBOL source program, we have DOSVS IPL statements and job control statements for compile, link edit, 
and execution. We quit to get back from the editor back to CMS. Now we would like to try to compile this program under DOS VS. To do this, we are going to use the alternating technique. We will first IPL DOS VS into our virtual machine, and we will pass the program and its job control to DOS by using the spooling mechanism of VM370. This process is simplified by an exec named DOS transfer and the use of program function keys. Let us watch how we do this. I push program function key one, which causes the command DOS transfer COBE test one COBOL to be executed. This exec contains a series of commands which pass the program and IPLs DOS VS. I then push program function key 10, which causes my card reader to be ready. It causes an interrupt similar to pushing the start button on the card reader. This makes DOS VS look to the card reader for its IPL statements. DOS VS IPL is now complete and job code debug has now begun to compile our progr COBOL program using the DOS VS COBOL compiler under DOS VS. When the compilation has ended, we get the attention OOC message, which means that the reader is out of work. We also can tell that there must have been some diagnostics because the program canceled and did not go on into link edit and test execution. At this point, we re-IPL CMS in our virtual machine, again by pressing a program function key. Our listing from the DOS VS program compilation is now sitting in our card reader and we will transfer it in and make it a CMS file by another exec called CMS transfer. By pressing key two, we execute the exec CMS exfer, which transfers the listing into a CMS file. We now can examine our compiler listing using the facilities of the CMS editor. We edit the listing file again by pressing a program function key, then locate our diagnostics. We notice that they are the same ones which we saw in Love's program. We can also print the listing on our printer for future reference. Print, code test one, syslist. We now again invoke the CMS editor and use its context editing facilities to correct the source code and then file the program back onto our disk. We will now pass the program back to DOS VS to compile again. Since we have corrected all the syntax errors, after compilation we will link edit the program and begin test execution. So we IPL DOS VS and begin the compilation. We do this by pressing the program function keys as we have done before. Compilation is now beginning and will be followed soon by the link edit. Now the program is about to start executing and we need a tape for execution. The pause card reminds us of our need for a tape. We send the VM370 operator a message asking for a tape. Message to the operator, please give me a scratch tape as 283. As soon as he attaches a tape to our virtual machine, the program can begin execution. 
The data looks much the same as it did when we were executing directly under CMS. In this environment, we do not have access to interactive debug, but rather are using the batch symbolic debug or sim dump capabilities of the compiler. When the program ab ends during test execution, we will pass the listing back to CMS and examine the symbolic dump output using the CMS editor to determine the cause of the program error. You can see how the CMS exec capabilities and the program function keys of the 3270 terminal facilitate this alternating operating system technique and make it a rather simple process. The technique which we have just seen could also be used to alternate between CMS and OS. You've just seen two demonstrations which show how CMS, the interactive portion of VM370, can increase the productivity of the data processing personnel in a DOS VS installation. At the same time that these activities were running on R135, we also had other virtual machines running other kinds of work. Let's briefly review what's happening on this 512K135. In one virtual machine, we're running DOS VS Batch. In two others, we're doing COBOL program development. In another virtual machine, we're running Script 370 for text processing capabilities. Two other virtual machines are being used for problem solving. One is running CMS Fortran, and the other is running a basic program under CMS. While not shown, we do have the capability to support remote 3270 terminals in the enhanced RJE system called RSCS. I think you'll agree that the 3270 can be a significant productivity tool when used with VM370. Now let's hear about State Street Bank and Trust in Boston, who is using VM370 for both production work and also to enhance the productivity of their application programming and systems programming staffs. State Street Bank and Trust is located in Boston and has approximately $1.4 billion in deposits. The Computer Services Division provides data processing services for the bank as well as the parent holding company. The reason we chose the VM CMS facility is that we were spending approximately $300,000 outside the bank for time-sharing services, and we estimated that by year-end 1976, we would be spending approximately $480,000. In January 1974, we made the decision to go with VM CMS on our 1.5 meg 158, given the fact that we had capacity. Knowing that VM CMS would take 15 to 20 percent overhead while running four MVT production regions below it. Our goal was to have VM installed and operational on April 1, 1974. Using our full absorption costing system, we expended approximately $60,000 to install a software and convert the major portion of the timesharing users in-house. Presently, we run VM from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. five days a week. We run four regions of OSMVT production under VM and allocate 800K of storage for MVT and 700K of storage for VM CMS. We have 20 concurrent VM CMS users that include various users throughout the bank, programming development staff, and systems programming. Because of VM CMS, we have obtained many more benefits than had originally been anticipated. The outside expense reduction in time sharing is in the six figures. In addition, we have the entire programming staff on 3270s utilizing CMS with one to two second response time. Interactive testing has definitely increased the productivity of our staff. The most significant enhancement in the area of productivity has been systems programming where we have obtained staff productivity increases of 100% or more. We did encounter some problems, but solved them. For example, we could not have met performance requirements without the VMA feature. We had an ICM access method being used by one application, and we built our own access method to bring it in-house. We needed and obtained some conversion aids that had been developed by VM users and placed in the shared users library at the University of Waterloo. 
The flexibility provided in VM, allowing the systems programmer to create various operating systems such as OS, DOS, and VS, has been a great morale booster. The systems programmer can now perform all SysGen testing in the course of a normal working day. VM CMS has given us the ability to try VS without utilizing a whole system, and we feel VM will help us in our migration to MVS. In addition, we now have control over time sharing, and it has enabled us to provide the users with better service. Vin Bacon's story is typical of our VM CMS users. The bottom line analysis of the costs incurred can be outweighed in most cases by the benefits received from their use of VM370 and CMS. In addition to our demonstration of online program development, let me re-emphasize its capabilities for problem solving, interactive applications, DOS to OS conversion, and as a migration and testing aid. Remember, VM370 is an IBM-supported system control program. It's easy to install, operate, and maintain. And it has high customer acceptance. And most important, it's a proven people productivity tool. Try it. You'll like it.